I'm Fern Carrero. I got breast cancer myself. I got it in 2000 for the first time. And right after that, I started my first walk. I get my children involved, my colleagues involved. I collect money from them every year. And I hear all the wonderful things that the money does. Besides the research, the housing, the support, it, it's, it's, it's everything to people who are suffering with cancer. When I first started walking, it was in Central Park. That day, we walked in the rain, rain or shine, people show up, and, and they bring an incredible number of people with them to see that everybody that shows up is supported. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible to see every year. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Others passed by, but a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, then put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. We are all neighbors. We are all brothers and sisters in Christ. And thanks to the efforts of those who do not turn a blind eye, the American Cancer Society is making an impact in the fight against breast cancer. Death rates have dropped 34% since 1989. Last year, nearly 43,000 patients and caregivers were housed in the Hope Lodge facilities and the American Cancer Society assisted almost one million people who reached out to them for help. One million people who didn't have to stand alone because there were good Samaritans who were willing to stand with them. This year, more than 230,000 women will face a breast cancer diagnosis, and 3,000 will die from the disease. My name is Kara Power, and I am a leadership coach for Kara Power Coaching, but I am also a member of the board of directors for the American Cancer Society. I got started working for the American Cancer Society by being an active volunteer and one of the volunteer activities that I had was to be at the registration table for making strides against breast cancer and I am still a volunteer at the registration table for making strides against breast cancer and I love it. As an executive coach I empower people to overcome perceived challenges and to see and create opportunities. So making strides against breast cancer really embraces that philosophy. So making strides against breast cancer is just such an amazing event and opportunity to bring thousands of people out in the fight against breast cancer. In New York and New Jersey, we have 27 making strides events, but they actually take place. There's um, over 300 taking place throughout the United States. The event here in Brooklyn last year raised over a million dollars. Um, so we have events ranging from $500,000 well over um, $3 million. So we are just so excited um, to see what we're gonna what we're gonna shoot for this year. We're hoping in New York and New Jersey um, to raise about twenty million dollars in making strides against breast cancer. The money from these events supports the American Cancer Society's research, education, and service. So um, the fact is that actually when a woman is diagnosed with breast cancer, one in two women reach out to the American Cancer Society. So half of all women newly diagnosed with breast cancer will reach out to the American Cancer Society for help. And so we have an incredible obligation when they call us to be there for them. And we um, provide them rides to treatment. We connect them with um, breast cancer survivors who may have had the same diagnosis so that they can hear about their experience. We offer them programs to re receive wigs and go through our Look Good, Feel Better session, which helps them um, look good, feel better, you know, within the aspects of, of their treatment during their journey. And then again, our Hope Lodge facilities throughout the country, enabling them to get the treatment in the locations that they need, but not experience the high expense of a hotel cost. We actually have Hope Lodges throughout the country, 
and they are a place of lodging for a cancer patient and their caregiver going through treatment. So it enables them to stay free of charge in major cities throughout the United States so that they can get the treatment that they need at some of our best facilities. And research, I mean, where would we be without the research? The American Cancer Society has been a part of nearly every research breakthrough, including Herceptin and Tamoxifen, which as many um, breast cancer survivors and their families will know, are incredible life-saving drugs um, in the treatment today. I got drawn to the American Cancer Society after I lost my mother to cancer. Um, so the fight against cancer is very personal to me. I lost my mother when I was 17 years old. My father is a 21-year colon cancer survivor here because of early detection. So the cause is near and dear to my heart and uh, it's a labor of love when I get to come to work every day. I lost both my mother and my grandmother to cancer. So anything I can do to help eradicate this disease. I am all in, all for, and um, want to do. Hi, I'm Jesse Martinez. Hi, my name is Silvana Cusimano. My name is Mary Lesfarges. Betty Ann Hassan. I'm Joe Gillette. I am the uh, co chair of the Relay for Life of Bergen Beach, Mill Basin, and Marine Park, and I'm a volunteer for the American Cancer Society. Um, we're here today at our kickoff event at the Cathedral of St. Joseph's, and um, it's just a tremendous gathering. And I thought it would be a wonderful opportunity uh, for the Cathedral of St. Joseph's and the American Cancer Society to join forces and to create a powerful partnership. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so we thought we'd start the month off with a, a kind of a novel way to, to kick off uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month and we're doing it with the Zumba flash mob. We open up an invitation to the community, pure social media, come on down, no fee to be a part of it. This is not about raising money, this is about raising awareness. And uh, we got some great instructors. We're gonna be doing the finale of our Zumba flash mob outside in the rain. We're gonna change the name to a Zumba splash mob. Hopefully we get a, a big crowd. I got involved because I am a breast cancer survivor five and a half years. I've been involved a few years already because both my best friends have had breast cancer and now I have breast cancer. I'm a cancer survivor, 14 years. Um, and when I was first diagnosed... He called me to his office and he told me I had breast cancer. At that moment, I had it was almost like getting a punch in the stomach, and um, I almost had a breakdown. When I left the doctor's office, I said to my husband, I wanted to go and speak to Reverend McCoy, who was my pastor at that time. I called him, and, and we went to see him, and he prayed with me, and I found peace in the prayer. The moment I found out that night, I prayed. I took the rosaries out and I prayed to God. I prayed to my family up above and to give me the strength so that I can, you know, work through this. And I went to church. I got myself blessed by the priest. And I knew that I could fight this cancer. I did a chemo for two years for seven hours. Went every three weeks for an hour and a half. I am now on a half hour chemo and a few weeks. I will be on I lost a friend uh, to lung cancer, but then since the time that I got involved, I lost an aunt uh, to breast cancer. My cousin has gone through breast cancer. And then as I've gotten involved with the community, you really end up meeting people just in regular walks of life who maybe you didn't know were affected by breast cancer. And the great thing about doing projects and events that uh, raise awareness is you find out a little bit more about your neighbor. And it gives really people an opportunity, people who are going through it or affected by it, 
an opportunity to communicate with others and to find out they're not alone and to see so much is going on. And, and really the main thing is you're not alone and there are people that want to help. I was in a support group. Then I heard that there was the walk. And I was like, okay, I'll come out of my shell. And I've been walking ever since. I had a friend who actually got wounded from him. So I walked in on a field. Mary was in the seal, Katrina, Monica, and now I walk with Joanne and Peggy. I named my team Joanne's Pink Angels because they stood by my side. I now have the cheerleaders, the step team, they all perform at the walk. I must tell you, my friends begged me to come to the walk. I felt bad asking everyone to come. Every year they're like, when is the walk? Sure, when is the walk? Uh, I never would have been able to get through it without them. That just to talk to or to take care of after a chemo treatment and to make me laugh and not think about what I, you know, I'm going through. You know, your family and your friends constantly being there for you and knowing that they're praying for you. Uh, my best friend's brother, he's, he's a deacon at the church and they're praying for me and they're letting me know, <laughs> even when they're not around, that they're there for me. I feel their prayers, I feel their energy I need to sustain me and I feel it every day. So that is helping me a thousandfold. And they walk with me. So that, that shows me that they care and you know, it'll maybe that money will help to take care that my daughters don't wind up with breast cancer because I was the first person in my own family. I love walking because uh, it empowers me. You see all the pink. Um, Everyone is out there walking and it gives me inspiration to keep on walking, move on, raise money to, to make a difference. But my main thing is to give back. It means a great deal to me, not just because I'm a part of it. I feel that I can be, I can represent the women out there, the survivors, to show them that this is not a death sentence. This is just a blip in the road and that we need to live our life. That my motto is that cancer should not get in the way of your life. Your life should get in the way of cancer. I started a Making Strides team at Brookdale Hospital where I was working at that time. I wanted to give back because American Cancer Society had given me so much. And I wanted to keep working to fight the fight against cancer. I send so many people to American Cancer and they never send so I want you all to know, please be there for us. It has saved my life and many others. We always tell everybody, no amount is too small. Anything that you give counts, everything that you give is added in. I'm always asking for donations at work and asking friends to come out and support breast cancer, especially the strides walking. We have a large team. And last year, we raised over $25,000. To take part in this event gives me a hope for the future, knowing that my children to come, maybe my grandchildren and my nieces and nephews and the generation to come, maybe one day we can find a cure for cancer. Because we've lost so many people along the way to breast cancer, and I pray that one day we may find a cure. I will be doing the walk. I am the co-captain of the District 22 Super Striders team with Dr. Rhonda Farkas, who is the school superintendent. And we have kind of com uh, combined our superpowers to put together this huge team, hopefully of teachers, community, students, and we're all gonna walk together behind the District 22 banner on October 29th. I wasn't prepared for it, but now I'm ready for the fight. We're ready to roll. No. <laughs> You
So Strides is an amazing event for the American Cancer Society, but what we did this year is instead of having small teams all over the place, we were able to put together a huge community team to walk as one. Look at what Joe Gillette has done in the entire team that we have behind us. We have 85 people work, walking with us, you know, as part of the District 22 Super Striders. I think that's fantastic. My name is Lori Cumbo. I'm the city council member for this district. You know, to have this kind of energy in the district today is fantastic. It's amazing. I mean, the positivity and the diversity here is really impactful. We have teachers, we have school administrators, we have family, we have a baseball association, uh, all different small groups. It's really a little bit of everything, which is really what our community is about. I'm Nancy Colt. I am head of community engagement for the Brooklyn and Staten Island offices of the American Cancer Society. We're expecting between 30 and 40,000 people here in Brooklyn today. I think there's expected 40,000 people here. There are over 40,000 people here today in Prospect Park and I mean that's phenomenal and that's incredible and that's just an amazing turnout and uh, it's people from all walks of life in Brooklyn again from the little kids to the seniors and the schools and the churches. Just fantastic, it really is what Brooklyn's all about. It's a great day. I go out in the community, I talk to civic leaders, I talk to principals of schools, make sure they know um, about making strides a, a, against breast cancer, raise awareness and help bring people um, to the walk and make sure they know about all the things they can do to fight breast cancer. Hi, my name is Debbie Garifalo and I am the very proud principal of Marine Park Intermediate School, who is here today with our marching band to celebrate, to honor this Making Strides event. We're very honored to be here today um, to support this great event. And we've been here since 7.30 this morning, freezing, but it doesn't matter. The children are energized, because this is where they want to be to fight this disease. And we're so proud of everyone who's out here today. It's an, it's an effort that we're all making as a community, and it's an effort that we're going to continue to do each and every year for as long as they run these events but this is important work. I'm Miss Augustinaccio, I'm the Dean at IS228. I'm Yadir Escobar, I teach special education at David A. Booty Middle School. We are walking to raise awareness for our cheerleaders for breast cancer and also we are here so that our students could raise awareness for the community and also to find a cure. We are the new generation that has to continue this and to see so many children here gives me so much hope and inspiration because they're a part of this at a young age and they're just going to continue and carry on this tradition um, and legacy to make sure that we fight breast cancer and we discover ways in which we can prevent it from even happening. And I'm so inspired by the men who also um, can suffer from breast cancer as well, but I'm suspecting that the majority here are supporting mothers, are supporting sisters, um, are supporting aunts neighbors, sisters, friends, everyone. Um, and it's so powerful to see men here supporting women because oftentimes you think of cancer being a very lonely process. And to have so many men here shows that there's strength here, shows that there's love here, and it really shows the very best of humanity. For the walk in general, it's really about awareness and fundraising. What we want to show as a community that we can make a difference. Maybe people individually don't think they can, but when you start to put 50 people together, 80 people together, 100 people together, guess what? We can make a difference. And uh, in a very short time, I think we've raised over $4,000 just from this team. But more importantly, we have a huge team of uh, kids, parents, teachers, and that's really what uh, today is all about for me. I feel that, you know, we need to bring the community together to bring awareness to the cause. And you know what, as women, I feel, I believe that we put this on the top of the chain and um, bring it to the forefront so that we can, you know, be role models to everyone out there and support each other. I think the major goal is to raise money for cancer research um, in order to fight breast cancer. So I think that one of the things that will be most exciting is the ability to raise over a million dollars. And that money goes towards research raising awareness and helping patients and survivors uh, deal with their cancer journey. I feel very excited. I can't believe the turnout today, even though that it was really, it was kind of brisk out. But you know, to, to hear that it was 40,000 people strong just in Brooklyn, that's a huge success. That's not even counting the other four boroughs. I've done this for about five years now, and it's such a community effort. People come together, the energy is palpable. 
we're just all really here for one really amazing cause. This is my first year participating. Uh, for about four years now. Every year we've been doing it, yeah. This is his first time. <laughs> this is my sixth year. Oh, I'll be back every year. <laughs> I love it. So I met uh, Big Daddy uh, about two months ago. He was auctioning off one of his uh, big dirty hats uh, for charity. That was a science experiment, be it, honest. It was a science experiment to see if the hat would uh, walk and breathe by itself. It was, yes. So uh, he was very generous and he was putting his hat up for auction and said the winning bid was going to go to the charity of the bidder's choice. Yep. And as the bidding increased with my crazy musician friends, some nut went and bid $750 for a hat that wasn't worth two cents and uh, gave the money to charity. So he's why I'm here today. Thank you for having me here. And uh, that song there I just did, uh, Judy Garland sang that a long time ago. I, I want to dedicate that to uh, Judy Reggio. Her uh, birthday was yesterday. Never had the privilege of meeting her. She passed away from ovarian cancer. But uh, she gave me the greatest gift I ever had. And <laughs> choking up. Donna, right here in front, love of my life, center of my universe. She is a one-year survivor of breast cancer. I lost both my mother and my grandmother to cancer, so I am out here for the cause every year, whatever I can do to help. My husband, who has been uh, diagnosed with melanoma cancer, he's my motivating factor. My mother-in-law, Fran Agostinaccio, she is a one-year survivor of breast cancer. My aunt recently passed away from uh, breast cancer, so that's what we mostly do it for, and my cousin in Puerto Rico as well. We are supporting a friend. We work for a beauty salon. And we're here for support our friend and all the girls are here. I lost my mom, my grandmother, I have friends who have been diagnosed with breast cancer and I just want to make sure that my daughter never has to worry about getting breast cancer. You're walking so one day our daughters will never have to hear the words, you have breast cancer.